It's only a pilot project, but this solar-powered desalination plant can purify around 5,000 litres of water an hour. Using a mixture of clay and phosphates found in Morocco, scientists have developed a filter they say is 10 times more efficient than existing techniques. Where there is a brackish or salt water and that need to have uh, pure or drinkable water. This can be the case, uh, for example, for schools, for hotels, or for uh, some uh, community that uh, are not connected to the grid, to the national grid. The project team plan to build a mobile system that will fit inside a shipping container. It can be scaled up to produce as much as 300,000 litres of water an hour, a valuable resource for both drinking and for agriculture, especially in remote and underdeveloped areas, and which pays itself off in just a few years. The benefit is that once the investment is done, uh, the payback is very, very short because you can consider that you amortize your, your equipment through the 10 years to 15 years, but you can get your payback starting from the fifth year. Advances in green technologies such as solar desalination are being talked about at this year's UN climate talks. In public display areas, the emphasis is less on cutting edge innovations though and more on the future of electric cars. There's a strong focus here on technology, an underlying hope that innovation can and will stave off the worst effects of climate change. It's an attractive idea and there has been progress in the area of green energy, but it still only makes up about 10% of global supply and much, much more needs to be done if the world is to be weaned off coal, oil and gas. Technology is not going to save us. It might actually create some more problems and that's something that we need to really think about. It's not just about changing the source of the energy, but about changing the system in which the, that energy operates. Current plans to cut greenhouse gas emissions fall well short of the goals set by the Paris Agreement. It aims to limit the rise in global temperatures to two degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels by the year 2100. Undoubtedly new technology can and will play a part in the reduction, but the feeling here is that it will require a much more profound shift in energy production and use to stave off the worst effects of a warmer world. Tarek Vasley, Al Jazeera at the UN Climate Talks in Marrakesh, Morocco.